Bula, Bula Vinaka, welcome. Hello everyone. Bonjour. Uh, my name is Cédric Obweck and I'm working for World Vision Australia in disaster risk reduction and emergency response. I'm really delighted to be here um, with you today. I'm a bit stressed to be honest, but it should be okay. Um, and I would like to thank the organi organizer UNDR to give me the opportunity to present uh, our work. Um, a little bit of background um, about me. So I'm a Belgian born in Holland um, who live all my life in France. Half of my family from different countries of Africa. Uh, my wife is Indonesian and I started to call Australia home for the last uh, eight years. I've been working in the humanitarian and development sector um, for over 15 years around the world and I have backgrounds in physical geography. So I'm here to present and um, speak on behalf of my brothers and sisters from the Pacific and all the partners from the Australian Humanitarian Partnership. So I'm very confused. <laughs> um, the Australian Humanitarian Partnership, also called AHP, so the acronym, um, is a unique and exciting uh, initiative that is supported by the Australian government, uh, especially the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, uh, DFAT. The AHP covers three key areas in disaster risk management, preparedness, response, and recovery. The AHP has been designed to enable rapid response to humanitarian crises around the world, using the knowledge, skills, and network um, to provide life-saving assistance to impacted populations. There are two main objectives, to save lives in the aftermath uh, of conflicts, disasters, and other humanitarian crises, and to strengthen capacities to prepare for and recover from disasters and adapt to a rapid changing climate. A key component of the AHP and what makes it so innovative um, is really that on faces on collaboration and partnership, a consortium approach to working together to build disaster resilience in the Pacific. The AHP is composed by three funding mechanisms to address its goals, rapid onset and emergency response, slow onset and protected crisis, and preparedness to disaster ready program. The AHP has been operating since February 2017. Six organization-led consortium draw upon their diverse and strong experience in the field, the community engagement, and provide a wide range of technical skills to support high-quality pre preparedness work and humanitarian response. So those consortium-led organizations are Caritas, with the church networks, we call them Can Do, Save the Children, Australia Care, Oxfam Australia, World Vision Australia, and Plan. And in total, we have about 22 partners. Um, within the rapid emergency and slow onset protected crisis response activi activation mechanisms, since it started and so far up to March 2019, about 16 activations have been declared and supported of a value of 67 million Australian dollars, reaching out about 865 beneficiaries. Um, from the beneficiaries, about 43% um, um, children and youth, 26% uh, women, 20 men, and 11% people with disability. 87% of the funding were used for slow onset protected crises, and includes such as crises such as the Syria, Syria response, Bangladesh, and 30% of the rapid onset and emergency response, such as Ambae volcano um, response in Vanuatu, Sulawesi tsunami in Indonesia, among many other emergencies. In terms of geographical spread funding, um, about 60% of the AHP activation have been funding um, for, to support crisis in the Middle East and about 25% uh, to support crisis response in Asia and the Pacific. Um, the AHP Disaster Ready Program uh, is focused on supporting disaster risk reduction and climate change adaptation work in the Pacific. Through Disaster Ready, the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade uh, is investing about 50 million over the, f uh, the next five years. The program is being implemented in five countries in the Pacific, Papua New Guinea, Solomon Islands, Timor-Leste, Vanuatu, and Fiji, and also at the regional level, as you can see on the map. 
Uh, why the Pacific? But as you know, these countries are highly susceptible to natural disasters and to the present and future effect of climate change. Uh, among the 15 most riskiest countries from um, ranked by the World Risk Index in 2018, seven countries are located in the Pacific Islands, from which Vanuatu is ranked number one, Solomon Island number four, PNG number six, Timor Leste number 13. And for the last five years, Vanuatu is ranked as the most disaster prone country in the world. So these are some, some of the pictures of uh, recent disasters, the Cyclone Palm, earthquake in PNG, the Ambaya volcano, and some effect of climate change, uh, drought, El Nino in PNG, and um, sea level rise um, in Solomon Islands. Um, five objectives have been developed jointly by all stakeholders involved in the, prob in the program, from community level to national and regional level. NGOs are encouraged to work together for greater impact. Um, gender and disability inclusion and child pro protection are being integrated with the assistance of technical agencies like Christian Blend Mission Australia or the Pacific um, Disability Forum, for instance, based in Fiji. Um, why disaster ready is so focused on people with disability is we know that 15% of the world population are, um, are people with disability and people with disability are disproportionately affected in disasters and humanitarian crises. Um, for, in for instance, for every one person killed in disaster, another three are injured or left with a permanent disability. During the tropical cyclone PAM, the injury rate among people with disability was 2.45 higher than among people without disability. Even if, for instance, people with disability can make to the evacuation center, they may not be able to enter because of the stairs or other barriers that may affect them. 74% of women with disability reported barriers to accessing evacuation center in tropical cyclone Pan. The five key ob objectives of the disaster ready program, as you can see, but just to summarize is DR is everyone's business and everyone needs to be involved. Um, an example like the private sector engagement, um, you need to know that in the Pacific, 80% of businesses are very small and medium enterprise. Um, so we work, to, we work with private sector colleagues to strengthen um, business continuity planning and coordination. So this is an example of one of the con consortium lead among the six. So this is World Vision. This is just to give you a structure on how it works at different level with the different partners. Uh, so you can see uh, from, from, from local level to, uh, no, it's okay. From local to national and regional. Um, in this slide, I just wanted to, to show you some of the diverse um, uh, range of activities that have been developed. Um, uh, with those, those activities have been developed in partnership with all key stakeholders, in, including target communities. Um, for instance, in PNG, activities are on Child Focus DR, on Safe School Initiative, in Timor Leste, it is strengthening disaster risk management capacities at Suko and village and district level. In Vanuatu, we do participatory, participatory 3D mapping. Um, at community and provincial level. So that's a just small example among many, many others. And just keep in mind, this is just one consortium. There are five others. So why Disaster Ready is just very, very unique for three key points. The coordination and collaboration, the social inclusion and innovation, trying new things, looking at new way in doing disaster risk reduction and climate change adaptation. All this in view to support and facilitate, facilitate the localization process, align, al aligning to global framework, the SDGs, and the framework, the Paris Agreement. So I'm not going too much in detail because I have only five minutes left, but this is a bit the structure. But basically, you have joint country plans that have been developed. You have joint outcomes, joint, um, joint monitoring and evaluation framework that have been developed among all the consortiums and each of the country. But an example of the impact of this coordination, a recent example is, for instance, in Timor-Leste, where the country community is supporting an early warning system working group to be set up with, within the government and CSOs. 
Recently, an MOU has been signed between the government and AHP. Um, Timor-Leste partners, as a result, the government talks about AHP as their program. AHP partners in Timor-Leste have influenced the government work on the revived uh, disaster risk management policy and got more inclusion and gender equality focus into the policy. We now have the government seeking AHP support for socia so socializing the policy at sub-national level and also asking for support for a monitoring system on the policy. So that's a very good example of, of co coordination and the impact at the country level. Sorry? Can you help me? Oh, can you come back one? Thank you. So to do this, a key step is, on, is to engage directly with the people with disability, particular, pa particularly women, to understand the vulnerabilities and barriers they face, identify the strategy to remove those barriers and make the most of the capabilities that people with disability can bring to disaster preparedness and humanitarian action. But the reality in the Pacific is many disabled people organizations have only one or two staff and are reliant on members and volunteers um, their time to progress their organization work. So disabled people organization, as we mentioned, um, DPOs, as we call them, have broad mandate and diverse, diverse function and limited resources. While inclusion in disaster preparedness and response is a key priority for people with disabilities, at the same time, it is only one of the competing priorities to watch, towards which DPOs are trying to allocate their limited resources. That is why the AHP disaster ready component has taken an innovative approach to disability inclusion within disaster preparedness and response. It is not only working with, but also directly funding Pacific disability organization to ensure they have a voice in decision making and are able to get skills, knowledge and time they need to engage with humanitarian partners. Sorry, I'm reading a lot, but there are a lot of information. That is why technical support and funding is provided by Pacific Disability Forum, which is a regional entity based in Fiji, and Christian uh, Blind Mission, CBM, uh, Australia, to ensure that no one is left behind. Multifaceted efforts to increase women leadership in local council, humanitarian preparedness and response are being done by AHP partners as well. CARE is leading a lot of this work. In Vanuatu, for instance, AHP partners support women in le leadership empowerment of women in forums like community disaster and climate change committees. As a result, in those communities now you have 50% of representation of women. In cash transfer program as well, with a focus of, um, of women's group and women forums are established. So, some innovation. I don't have time to go to all of them, but um, I can mention, for instance, um, our the church network and can do consortium is working using smartphones uh, to try and GIS to try to map out uh, evacuation centers, schools, and church facilities um, and that, that are accessible to all. Uh, they're also uh, interesting enough working on a, a, theolo a theology of disaster risk management, identifying community per perceptions around God and disaster to influence community members and religious leaders to be more prepared. Um, That's a partner that is also very, very, very interesting. Feed Ready, based in the US, but they just opened their office in Fiji. Um, Feed Ready meets humanitarian reconstruction aids needs by transforming logistics to technology, design and engaging people in new ways. They make useful items where they are needed to solve problems locally using new technology, 3D printing, lasers and things like that. They pass on the skills to others to training and capacity building and provided those equipment. They're pioneering innovative approaches to the toughest challenges regardless of the sector. The impact of this is dramatically improved efficiency, making aid faster, cheaper and better. The vision in this program is made in the Pacific, for the Pacific, by the Pacific. So these are some pictures of the work they are doing in terms of preparedness. On the right picture is the use of the 3D printing. Um, these are examples of recent publications that are av available on the website. So one is a review that has been done in Vanuatu on, um, on the community-based disaster 
risk management approach, which is very interesting because they, they look at previous programs that have already finished and uh, other that are already going on, and to see and they make some recommendation on how to, to better use the community-based disaster risk management approach. In the middle, it's uh, a recent publication from our colleagues from the Solomon uh, Island Med Services, one of our partners, who have been uh, doing an assessment on traditional knowledge on DR uh, and climate change adaptation in remote communities in Makira where we work, um, in order to be better in strengthening early warning system and supporting the structure that are in place. Um, the, la the, last, um, the last publication, and I have some, I have some with me if you're interested, it's a, a cash-based um, research study that I've been conducted by Oxfam and by Save the Children in, fi um, in, um, in Fiji and Vanuatu, and uh, that, that helped to, to do more cash-based transfer programming for preparedness and for response. Um, and lastly, last week was launched uh, in the Pacific Resilience uh, Week in Fiji, um, a shelter catalog that has been developed by uh, Habitat for Humanity and all the clusters. Um, it's a it's a really interesting first handbook, um, and it's really more than a handbook. It's a legacy, a living document that um, that has been created uh, to provide a um, um, better solution in terms of response and preparedness for for stronger houses. So. So far, within the Disaster Ready program, since it started, 26 activities have been implemented across five countries and at regional level, and more than 26,000 beneficiaries have been reached just uh, in the first year. And more than 500,000 of leverage of other funding um, have happened throughout the, the program. Recommendation, DR must be done in partnership. With, tho with those most at risk and should begin at the community level, building on their views and existing capacities. The participation and leadership of vulnerable and marginalized groups, especially people with disability, use the elderly, ethnic minorities, women and sexual and gender minorities in the design and implementation of DR action plan and climate change adaptation plan. It's critical to ensure that policy and system reflects the needs, priorities and capacities of those most affected by natural disasters and climate change. Invest in local action and implementation of the Center Framework for, um, Center Framework for Action support. Uh, the regional level, um, some efforts have been done to translate the SFADR into contextual appropriate actions. For instance, the Framework for Resilient Development Practices in the Pacific. Strengthen multi hazard early warning system, including the integration of traditional knowledge. Ensuring this includes the translation of scientific data into meaningful, accessible, and easy to understand information disseminated in a timely and diverse means. Anyway, there are many others. I will stop there. But this is all what all the partners, all the partnership is trying to do. Thank you very much for listening. Um, and I would like to thank um, the Australian government and the Department of Foreign Affairs to invest in this very innovative and unique program. And if you want to learn more, you can come and see me and have a chat. Thank you very much, Cedric.